for up. Well, this is a little different. Uh, as stated earlier, uh, Bowser unfortunately can't make it here for Far Back Fridays. For uh, Unfortunately, I guess there's fires in his area, it sounds like. So they're having some intermittent power issues. But don't yeah, worry. Um, yeah. yeah, We've got you covered here. Where they have the retro computer games. Uh, I grew up on something a little different. I grew up on the old consoles. So... When I refer to retro gaming, that's going to be the councils for me. So uh, I've got a couple of games ready. Got one in the system right now. If you can't guess it, it's going to be one of the Mega Man games. It'll be my favorite one. Probably the first one. I think it was the first one I played. Uh, I believe my brother got this one, one uh, for one of his birthdays. Because I don't think it was one of those Christmas presents. But yeah, he got it for his birthday and... Uh, I played the heck out of it. I really liked it. A lot of people say Mega Man 2 is their favorite, but you know what? I'm going to change things up a little bit. It's not going to be Mega Man 2. But uh, it's going to be a surprise. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get things going in just a second here. I am also here to help. I don't know a lot about these console games. Um, I was allowed to play uh, <laughs> console. Uh, my, my dad my dad bought the NES. Um, he, he spent a lot of the time on that. Okay. I think I played two NES games. Game Mega started. Man, this is Mega Man 3. One of the, my, like I said, that was uh, one of the first ones I played. It's one of the favorite ones I had, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Now, I doubt this will last a full... Yeah, we're only going to be streaming for about two hours tonight, because I do have uh, my Curse of Strahd game at about 8.15, so we'll be going until about 8 o'clock. Oh, cool. Curse of Strahd sounds fun. Curse of Strahd. Magnet Man. Yep. Now, the fun thing that we found out completely by accident with Mega Man 3 is that if you have a... Uh, Second controller plugged into port two. Uh, Mega Man not only has like a super jump where he can basically vault the entire height of the screen, but he can be invincible. You fall into a pit, and you won't die. And under certain under certain circumstances, if you knock his health all the way down to zero, uh, he will become invulnerable. But you'd have to use the other powers. He won't be able to use his blaster. Wow. Let's just extend the music a little bit. That's Mega, the man. Yes. Mega Man. The blue bomber himself. Time to blow people up with my arm gun. I think an arm gun would be pretty, uh, pretty rough, I think. It's kind of handy, though. Yeah, that's true. Look, see, there's Tom. You know, Tom showed up. Tom always shows up when there's quality stuff, so it, it's rare in the PC. <laughs> Don't worry, Tom. I remember the good days. And yes, Tom, that is Striker of the Black Pants Legion. Yes. We gotta get Tom in here someday. Guaranteed. We gotta get Tom in here someday. You know, Tom Tom says he wants to play video games. I just don't see him do it anymore. I, I guess he, he became... He plays them occasionally. On his own time. I guess, I guess he's just not interested in video games anymore. I guess he just decided to grow up and get a mortgage and, you know, have a wife and kids and eight cars. And yeah, maybe, but you know, truck, that's... Boat, truck. Yeah, that's one of the worst things, though, is that when someone claims, oh, I've grown up, because yeah, let's go to a, yeah. a couple of conventions with a couple of guys, and uh, one of them literally stopped going because it, I, apparently he, you know, more or less, quote-unquote, grew up, grew up, grew out of it, so it's like, man, that's not fun. Yeah, but see, it's just, it's not the same once you get rid of your race car bed. Man. Once you get rid of your race car bed, it's just, it's not the same. Ah, oh, damn it, okay. I've been okay. playing Elden Ring, Tom. Huh? If you have a girlfriend, if you play Elden Ring and have a girlfriend, you will end up making this, you know this. Oh, I hate puzzles like this, too. Oh, yeah, these... You gotta learn the patterns of these things, and then... If you're, sometimes you're off by a... Okay, you know what? I could... You know, no, let's, let's not cheat it just yet. Let's not cheat it just Tom, yet. Tom, why don't you play Elden Ring on the stream and show people, Hello, I am Tom Tombert Tomberdin of the Black Camp Legion. Okay, I am, I am the... I am the... Fight Man. Yeah. 
We hear this quite often. Okay, then it's then, and then we're gonna get one more! There it is! Yeah, there you go. Oh, right. okay, that's there we go. Okay, that's how it's Where does this guy's power, like, magnets? Like, what if yes. he just was like, my power is EMP? Yeah, he'll have the, like, you see those, like, little rotator things? Those are actually, um, magnets themselves. Uh, they will pull me closer to them if I get close enough, like... There, uh, damn it, damn it! Ah! So. Can't seem to puzzle a little bit, alright. But, like, the thing, the nice thing about these older games, though, is that they teach you how to play them. Like, obviously, that puzzle was right there without any complications. This next puzzle, similar thing, but it's got a complication right here. The magnet, which pulls you close to it, or makes it harder to move away from it. But it's in a safe environment, there's no pit or anything like that. It's just I, a cavern. You know, I thought... <laughs> I, I thought of something that would not stop. Yeah. Well, this guy's whole shtick is magnets, right? Yes. Well, what if when you defeated him, like, all the magnets in the world stop working? Ah, <sighs> like, like, That would be a bit of an issue. Would be a bit yeah. of an issue. Yeah. 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 Damn it. Like, I've defeated magnetism. Oh, God! Alright. Can Rush get us over? Boink. Ah, just too short for the puppy. Rush is a good boy. He helps you out in certain places. Alright, let's get this one. There we go. Alright, I haven't started sitting on the floor just yet, but I might need to. Alright, this guy's gonna suck. Okay, he shoots sideways, but when I get close to him, he's gonna start shooting artillery at us. Many things. Pits are one hit chaos. Also, oh, uh, if you guys are expecting no hit runs and speed strats and random and uh, just random mashups or anything like that, don't expect that. That's that's not how I play games. I do have a friend though who is pretty good at like no hit runs and things like that in games. Oh, there we go. Tom audiobook. He's like step one. I was very cool. The end. That's Tom the Book. Okay, you see now he's pulling me in. He's a bit when he does that, so that would hurt like a lot. I got hit. Uh, come on. Screw you. I mean, you're like a robot, right? Yes. Yes. Why would he have to throw magnets at you? Couldn't he just create a field and just make you dead? Uh, he's not that advanced, but. Could. I mean, I know he's not that advanced. He's literally throwing horseshoe-shaped magnets at you. He's, well, he's, okay. he's not a very advanced machine. But how else would you, would you know he's a uh, how else would you know he's a magnet guy if he didn't have the horseshoe magnet? Uh, when when all of the electronics failed at once, that would probably be my first guess is that this man is powered by magnets. Yes, fair. Okay. Ow. When all of the recording stopped working, I'd be like, oh, it's the magnet guy. Oh, he's at it again. And this was also back when everything was recorded on magnets, like feet, like tape and everything like that. Oh, yeah, I mean, exactly. I'd be like, oh, it's the Degausser. He's like, I'm Magnet Man. And I was like, I think Degausser sounds better. And he's like, no. And I'm like, listen, I'm generating the threat report. You, you are the Degausser. He's like, damn it. Villains don't get to choose their names. I was thinking of things of, that maybe I could record in the WBPL, maybe. I was thinking of things, maybe, eventually. Um, I, I know one of our guys does great Rimworld cooking until late night. And I was thinking of doing a late night Rimworld as well. But with my very cursed mod pack. An excellent kill, by the way. Excellent kill. Thank you. Good job. Uh, I just gotta do a quick little play around here to see if I can't alter something, but we got some time. Of course. Of course. I was thinking about doing something that stuff and just showing people the horrific Rimworld mod pack. Uh, oh, the mod I'm, pack you've been working on with hat? No, no, that's a different mod pack. Oh, okay. That one I'm not sure I would get to be able to stream cleanly. But uh, if I could, that one would also be very good. 
So, all right, you killed Magnet Man. He's gone. Uh, the Magnet Realm is without a leader. Uh, they are now leaderless. So what is your next move? Oh, great, Mega Man. All right. Well, the, what the Mega Man games work is basically turns into rock, paper, scissors. When you get one guy down, the rest will start to kind of fall to weaknesses. So now that we've got the Magnet Missile, Apparently, that goes over. I'm now very quiet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that now goes over. We would now use that ability to go over here to Hard Man. Hard Man? Yes. What is his special ability? Uh, he's a fat bastard. He is very similar to Wide Tom, and he is very wide and very heavy. So he is Wide Tom. Yes. But just with some metal. All right. Yes. We can make beasts yeah, someone disappear. Someone says they now hear an echo. I'm very roomy now. I'm distant. All right. Uh, okay, so text could be quiet. Is that what's going on then? I have no idea what yeah. they're saying now. He has the power of Maz. We just watch. Sounds cool. Get Tex out of the bottle. Okay, I'm not I did. In the bottle. <laughs> it says is Tex the new Orange Bowl announcer. Hold on. <laughs> now batting, Mike Piazza. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, you know. I mean, you gotta have fun with it. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it, well, I tried. I played the mixer a little bit to try and bring. Why? Well, I, I hope someone clipped that because <laughs> I don't know what it sounds like. Yeah. It's a good thing there are no timers in this game, but yeah, I was just trying to bring the uh, the game's audio vo volume down for me so I could hear you over the game better. Don't worry, I'm the sound in the background, down, down, brought to you by Bromo Seltzer. You know, all, all of that sort of stuff. Oh, God. I used to do radio back in the day, uh, but yeah, it's funny having that echo there. I love how Mega Man's looking at us like we're crazy. And on the bean level, no doubt. Yeah, and it, and it looks, and with the way that the color palette is, uh, his face messes, meshes very evenly with his eye color. So you really can't see, you know, the whites of his eyes, but it is there. So it looks like he's just got two little beady black eyes. I like those bear traps. Yeah. Power pellet there. I see, it's weird because when you first walk over those. Oh, okay. I got Knuckle Joe up there. We can't reach him. So he's got to use the dog. Who's a good boy? Yes, you're a good boy. Yes, you are. Why do you have a dog? Yeah, Rush. He has three forms in this game. The one I currently have access to, RC, is Rush Coil. Basically, he's got spring on his back and you just use him to get extra high. Dig showed me the clip of what it sounds like. And now we got monkeys. Look, I'll tell you how to deal with monkeys in Space Station 13. Okay. So the, the, the mistake, the mistake everyone makes on Goon is just start stabbing. You can't just start stabbing. They can take three or four knife wounds to the neck. Trust me, I've been chef. So what you gotta do is incapacitate the monkeys. Now someone would say, the smart thing to do with the apes on Goon is you, you, you put the blindfold on them or whatever, and I uh -huh. can never remember how to do that. So I use alternative methods. And okay. one of these alternative methodologies is to go build a flamethrower. Now, when it comes down to, again, these alternative methodologies, flamethrowers are fantastic. But the, the amateur mistake is to light the flamethrower first. You need to blast him a few times with plasma gas to, uh, like, get the room to flash over point, and then as the door's closing, light it. You let the monkeys burn in there for a bit, and then you harvest the charred monkey meat. Oh, you, you don't have to fight them. You pre cook the monkey. Right, you don't have to fight them. Now, if anyone doesn't know this plan and opens the back door, they're gonna have to fight burning apes, but that's not my problem now. That makes sense, that makes sense, but at the same time, they open the door and go in themselves, and you close the door behind them, that then becomes their problem. You are correct. Okay, there is a method to the monkey madness, and I'm here for it. So, okay, there's road construction robots, yeah. and a bunch of beans, and there's a guy. Because um, I'm not big on Mega Man lore, yeah. I don't know... Um, 
like why there's a bunch of robots moving beans. I'm assuming there's a reason. You know, I'm not I'm not judging. I don't uh, know the robot economy. Yeah, well, the basic reason and the basic lore of the Mega Man franchise is this. Uh, the Robot Masters, basically the bosses of any given level, um, have a specific ability. Uh, usually those are highlighted in the uh, instruction manual, but I haven't have gotten this instruction manual for a while. Let's get rid of these bees real quick. And, uh, nuts. But anyway, um, but for instance, in this game, like, Magnet, well, not, not Magnet, but Hard Man, uh, going off what we can see from mo from some of this level is that this is a construction site, so he probably so has something to do it? with construction being it, uh, altering terrain, you know, like, stamping right. down the earth, things sure. like that to make it easier to build on or what have you. Right, right, right. But yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've run some RimWorld, as you know, economic plans that were mildly catastrophic to the environment, um, much like my Dwarf Fortress plans. Yes. Um, so, so one of the things I was going to ask is, um, like, what, what is he building? Because normally on RimWorld, I have paved uh, the world uh, many times. It's, it's, it's usually one of my things. I pay for loot anything in the way of progress. I'm tired of having animals go crazy or when they attack people and I'm trying to bring them plants, spawn poison, or whatever. I just have artillery and parking lots. I turn everything into a Walmart. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'm wondering, what is this guy building? Because I've seen construction like this once before. Um, and this reminds me of Nom Nom Galaxy, uh, which is a great couch co-op game. Yes, that's the one where you make the soup, right? Yeah, it's, it's where you use chainsaws and kung fu and shotguns uh, to corner parts of the soup industry. It's a really ruthless game about soup. So, okay, I don't know what he's building, um, but you're throwing magnets at him. Yes, and he's throwing his fist at me. Right. But if I had to guess, this might be a mine, rather. Okay, well, what's he mining? Yeah, that's I mean, the that thing we don't know. Sense. But Wait, yes. No, that makes... That, that makes sense. Um, he died poorly. Uh, so good job. Ah, yes, the bean harvest has been bountiful this year. Ah, the French. Ah, the French champagne. It's fermented in the bottle. It's got the hard knuckle for this one. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There, there are some fun names at times in this game. Champagne, yes, Tom. Champagne. Ah, the French. Champagne has always been celebrated for its excellence. Uh, I'm sure there is a way to turn text down, to turn the music down without turning text down. Let me try that, actually. Here, hang on a second. Actually, uh, well, let's take a quick commercial break while I try and figure this out. No worries. I'm glad to make things exciting. Oh, I'm back about the head. Only we'll the right back after these very important messages. Look to XL. He's full of fun questions, answers, and jokes. True or false? Taking a bath was once against the law. Yeah, damn States right I am. America. That's true. True is right. With 2XL and terms of program dates, the fun never ends. Electronic Sonic. It's Tiger's new Sonic the Hedgehog handheld game. Energizer. All right, so what are we doing? Use the supersonic spin attack to I, I love the old robots. Evil robots. Sonic the Hedgehog.
Super Slam Basket and Full Court Slam Basket from Catacombs. Welcome to the factory where they make Cocoa Pops. I bet you all go cuckoo for this chocolatey tasting stuff. Here are us, Sonny. We'll start here, where each pop is packed with its great chocolatey taste. A taste that makes Cocoa Pops a delicious part of this complete breakfast. A taste so chocolatey, kids can't help going cuckoo. <laughs> Now, on the back of marked boxes of Cocoa Puffs, one free fold-out factory. Load it up and let the good times roll. Inspired by J.M. Barry's novel, Peter and Wendy. Out with your cutlasses! It's Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates. Catch me if you can! I'll seize Peter Pan and make him walk the plank. So come join the adventure of a lifetime. Arm yourself and prepare to do battle with the hero of all time. There's no danger I can't handle. It's Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates, weekdays on Fox. I don't want to hear one wisecrack about the hat. Now, back to our program. Oh, man. All right. Well, I guess here we are back. Yeah. Yep. We're back at, at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to unplug the system's audio. You've, luckily, you can do that with these old uh, prong systems and not HDMI and lose everything. Exactly. That's but, uh, kind of amazing. So, yeah, we're doing, well, we're doing it. I mean, this is quite literally an NES. So, I mean, we're, we're making this work. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I think it's kind of funny. I mean, what's, oh God, someone said, what's next? The Super Mario Brothers Super Show? Or he's just like, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, Captain I do Luke. have, I mean, okay, I don't have that on DVD, but I do you have a VHS of that be, somewhere. It, it should be on VHS. Oh yeah, I, I, I do have a VHS of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, yes. Uh, but I, I just do have like, a DVD of Super Mario Brothers 3, the cartoon. Nothing like Captain Lou Albano to come out and look exactly like you think a union plumber should look. And just come out and be like, swing your arms from side to side, da -da 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 to the Mario. You know, and I mean, that motherfucker tried. Oh, he did. He, he has, did. He has all my respect. Yeah. And actually, you know, I did get to meet Captain Lou once. Oh, my God. Uh, yes, he was at the very first Yomacon when they were was, still in that? the horseshoe. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So. So 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 how how was it to meet Captain Lou? Uh, that was quite a few years ago, but you know he's like most of the celebrities I have met. Uh, he was a generally nice guy. Uh, he wasn't quite as big as he used to be back in his wrestling days, but he you know was still pretty good off. But uh, just a nice guy, easy to talk to. Uh, shared some stories. I don't remember really any off the top of my head though about the show, about like some of the stories he told, but. You know, he didn't mind it quite as much as sometimes you might think a celebrity might. Uh, <laughs> it, it would be funny if he was like, yeah, I just stabbed Luigi a few times. Guy tried to screw me on a job, you know, and you're like, oh, my God. Sometimes when a show has a really tame background and everyone got along and was just really professional, I invent in my head like an alt take, you know? Oh, yeah. So, so like... I, and I'll do that for everyone but Mr. Rogers, because I know Fred Rogers was a saint. But like yeah. everyone else, I'll, I'll be like, if you see like Mark Kistler's Draw Squad or something like that on uh -huh. TV, I'll be like, yeah, he used to draw bomb targets for Strategic Air Command. Or, you know, just something yeah. something fun. And people go, what, really? And you're like, no. Or all the sex and drugs that went behind the, went down behind the scenes on Sesame Street. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those things where like people are like, really? And I'm like, no. Good God. Just, you know, doing, doing um, a fucking rail off Big Bird's beak and everything. You know, I, I think Sesame Street taught me a lot. Uh, I, when, I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be many things. But in reality, I would grow up to be Oscar the Grouch. I understand <laughs> Oscar a lot now. Yeah, I'm we, like, we, you know we all eventually turn out to be Oscar. Well, that's what I mean. It's like, I, when I was a kid, I was like, wow, he's mean. But as an adult, I'm like, hey, leave the fucker alone. He just wants to live in his trash can. Hey, <laughs> like, he doesn't want... Yeah, he is, he's the Diogenes of Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting there like, leave me alone. Fuck you, bud. I burned down. I used to care back in the 60s. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be Omega Head Fred, as, we used, as my dad used to call it. That's the one-ups. It's just the heads. Yeah. But yeah, uh, kitty, kitty, kitty. You know, I, I, I think it would be horrifying if you created a weapon that was like just a giant cat. A cat cannon that launched that launched anything. 
just anything. Like it opens its mouth and it's like, I don't know, a point defense kill system or whatever. Like it's, 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 it's like any of those steel rain systems just open its mouth and bang, you're like, Oh God. Also, I think Pogo dog would get a lot of people killed. Ah, uh, no, Rush is a good boy. He's a good enough boy. But in this game, he, oh, another big head front. Look at that. Okay, this guy's not going to start crapping tops until I... He craps three out at a time, and then once one despawns, he'll shoot again. Ah, uh, jeez. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I've ever done this part legitimately without... Uh, without, uh, okay, fall down. Without, uh, like, using uh, the super jump cheats or having rush jet under me. But, okay, it looks like I'm Dude, getting Dude, you're cool. Up. Yeah. Dude, you're fucking cool. You got the inertia. You got all this. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Done. All it took was a little bit of faith. I, I'm gonna tell you this much: like it's it, it, most most of the people who find themselves in times of trouble usually know exactly why they're there, and that's okay. You should not be confused as to why you're in trouble. You should never be confused as to why you're in trouble. We know why we're here. We're fighting the strange man who likes tops, and that's okay. But we have to kill him because the robot UN told us to, or whatever. Yeah, there, blew up. What is what is what is like what is Mega Man's boss like? Who who's sending uh, that, him on this like kill mission? That is Doctor Light. Uh, Doctor Light, along with Doctor Wily, who is the villain of the Mega Man series, they initially created is began creating all these different robots and things like that. Uh, their first production was their first creation was Proto Man, who Essentially, it's Mega Man's big brother to test, to basically test out the science, everything behind making like basically androids is what they are. Um, depending, well, not necessarily depending, but in the lore of the series, uh, Proto Man is let to go on his own because he was going to more or less burn out anyway because he had like a faulty power system. So Dr. Light let him go and live, you know, let him live out the rest of his time as he wanted to. Uh, then Wily and Light created the first six quote-unquote robot masters from the first Mega Man game, which was Bomb Man, Guts Man, Cut Man, Elect Man. Cut Man? Yes, Cut Man. He has a giant pair of scissors on his head. Wow. So what you're telling me is like DARPA got cut loose with a lot of money. And they're like, uh, yeah, uh, what, what kind of robots have you been working on with $85 billion? And they're like... Uh, right. We got Cutman. It's the latest weapon. Well, he it was stabs. actually meant. He, Cutman was actually meant for uh, wood felling, timber. He was meant to, you know, do forestation. Have they heard of bulldozers? Uh, well, yeah, but like he would not necessarily would have been the foreman, but he would have been, you know, like a major use of it. Like just, you know, well, again. Well, I'm just saying, like, if he was, like, a good supervisor or something, that's a good use of a robot. But one guy to cut down a forest is kind of like... You, you would want a, a bunch of those robots, the ones with the bulldozers. Again, that's... Well, they'd come man. in afterwards. But, I mean, you know, Cutman could work tirelessly 24 hours a day, you know, working in whatever area he was supposed to. And, you know, within hours compared to days, what it would take a crew, he could be all set and done. That's fair. But, I mean... It's a, it's a strange robot world. I'm trying to wrap my head around it, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, if I was at the I mean, computer, we could really dive into the Mega Man lore. No, I, do, I don't need to. I, I believe in show, don't tell. And, sure. you know, giant eyes need to walk toward you in a yeah. lava fall area. And yeah. that's that's Mega Man world. And we've got a uh, light bulb here. Just There we go. Turn some lights back on. Oh, a grenade. This guy's just going to... Gonna run around. Okay, he's just okay. Hang on. Oh, here he comes, and we're just and we'll just uh, blow him up. He was just a walking grenade. His kamikaze is at me, and uh oh, Ow. man, it's interesting because again, those things like basically turn on space for whatever reason. So you you know you can't see the geometry of the level. All right. Oh yeah, space is dude. On. If you can't. See yeah, if, well, if, if I can't see where I am, I automatically assume I'm in space and that I am high above the, you know, the, the Earth and terra firma and I am proceeding at relativistic speed. I, I presume that is my life. 
Every time I, I, I see the dark, I presume I have been transported to another dimension, and automatically that is where my brain goes. Correct. That Mega Man captures that very well. Ah, I missed time that. All right. Oh, fuck. Well, I explode. Good thing I'm at the halfway point, at least. Truly lag. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. My timing used to be a lot better back when I played this game pretty much every day. So, there is going to be some slip-ups here. And these little hoppy little bastards, they always look like lawnmowers when they're just kind of just chilling there. That's what I always saw them as. Oh, this is part's going to be fun. Uh... Yeah, we're playing Mega Man on the original NES hardware. On the original <laughs> NES time. Oh, that lag. I forgot about the lag of the hard knuckle. Okay. Good thing just one of these just knocks these guys out, so. Fuck yeah. Big punch. Kill. And the fun Strong thing about play. big punch is that I can direct it on which way to go over its distance. Is there one guy, one more last guy over here? Oh, nope, just uh, dragonflies. Yeah, I know we're getting here, we're at the end of the level. But yeah, uh, with the hard knuckle, you can hold up or down and the uh, knuckle will float in that general direction. Oh, I see. So it's like a bowling, you know, where you line it up and put a spin on it. Yeah. And we have got top spin, we just spin around. Now, one of two things, no, okay, one of three things will happen. One, I'll either successfully be able to take Shadow Man down with the ability. Two, I will lose pretty much the entirety of the, build, of the, of the ability, which is that second gauge on the left of the screen. Uh, that's your right. weapon meter. It's how, much, how many times you can use it. And I will lose all of that within one or two uh, attacks of the enemy. Or I will successfully take him down. Or not. Those are the three things that will happen. Just because the hitbox on this thing is weird. No, this is Mega Man 3. All right, here we go. Yep, that completely sucked that all down. I hit him in the wrong, in the wrong hitbox. So it oh, sucked man. everything down. That's now used up fully, so I can't use that anymore because I have no more ability in it. But I still have the magnet and the hard knuckle to try and hit him with. Uh, some weapons will do significantly more damage than others, aside from your regular uh, Mega Buster. Well, who knew that just violence, just, just go in there and be like, what are you going to do? I'm going to use my fist. Oh, yeah, that only takes away two, so. Yeah, that doesn't seem great. Yeah, just the regular Buster is good. Yeah, good to be good enough. Why, why didn't he have a flamethrower? Uh, that would be actually be... Uh, that's Heat Man from Mega Man 2 who has a flamethrower. Which actually... Okay, yeah. Let's just do this. Which actually, fun enough, in this game, uh, you actually do two boss runs. Uh, you do the initial boss runs of the game, which is you know, all these guys. And then there will be secondary levels made out of some of, these, uh, some of these levels here where you need to fight the bosses from the last Mega Man game. Mega Man 2, actually. So you'll be refighting Woodman, Quick Man, uh, Air Man, all those other guys. I remember Air Man. Yeah, yeah, fuck up his uh, fan with leaves from Woodman, which is like, why? I mean, he's an air blower. What happens if you get, you know, leaves into the leaf blower, not and not away from the leaf blower? Could gum it up. Serial logic. There is there is some logic behind these. Yes. Yeah, I know. But, I know. Uh, well, but another thing you could do against Woodman, though, is if you get a atomic fire in the game from Heat Man, if you fully charge that up, uh, you could just take Woodman out in one incinerating hit. Cool. Yeah, it's... Okay, yeah. I'm not really trying against this guy. He's annoying. Woo! Okay, what? I might... Okay, yep, game over. Good. Uh, all right, let's stage select. We'll swap gears and let's see. Shadow, you need him to go after Spark, and then Spark is. A it's funny enough in this game, it's not a complete round robin. Uh, the th there are three villains here: Snake Man, Neil Man, and Gemini Man. Their powers yeah. uh, weaken each other, so there's a three, and then there are uh, the other five weaken each other. None of these other abilities 
from like spark metal spark magnet top don't really are none of these other guys weakness snake man weakens gemini man who weakens needle man who in in, in himself weakens snake man oh. and we just got some bits Look oh at that. nice yeah uh, yeah we're gonna stop thank dying. you for the bits there mookie let's go after snake and man he's my favorite then it's all right, our Kalian, sir, and or madam, and or AI. Um, it's all right. We all stream of consciousness here. That's kind of the point of having a conversation, looking over, reflecting on it, and continuing. Yeah. Unless you're like in one of those weird chats where people scroll by at like a million miles an hour. That always weirds me out. Oh, bouncy bastards. Oh, I wish I could share this music everyone because this is like my this is like my favorite level, my favorite boss, and my favorite music in the game. It's just so cool sounding. Oh fuck you, little tiny snake heads. Yeah, you know, ain't been the same since I fight my. Oh, asking for fight. Snake Man facts. That's new. well, as 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 you know, uh, the average Snake Man is made up of half snake and half man. But what parts of which is somewhat tricky because they're made of robots too. So they're half snake, half man, half robot, is what you're saying. I didn't say the half was robot, but the robot's part is the worst part of all. It joins it all together. Like a stew. Like a stew made out of evil. Oh, I can't forget about not man, it's a snake, snake man fact. He may or may not be related to Jake the Snake Roberts. Whoa. Uh, pull Volters. Ah. And they've got these little bombing guys up here. They're just dropping the nets about it. Yeah, that's not even on brand for a snake guy. Like, he has a bunch of bomb guys. He he He's just hiring whoever's there. He's like, I spent all my money on the snake turrets. I don't have money for henchmen. Uh, get the average guys. All right. Call the uh, temp service. They've got guys, right? Yeah, the, 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 what do you got in the guys who throw stuff? Uh, I got Bolo Jones. Fuck, all right. Uh, yeah, we'll take him. Uh, what else? We got these guys on uh, Pogo, no, no. Lances, they just kind of fling themselves over a high bar, but yet there's no high bar. They just kind of vault on their own. All right, now listen. Yeah. We need to get up there, and we need to fight these guys for some reason. I'm sure we're here to g do great violence against them. Again, like, this guy spent all his money on, on snake turrets. He really likes a like snake people. motif. He really likes a snake motif. I get you. I get you. But it, it it's like, it kind of reminds me of the folly in The Sims, where people spend all their money ah. decorating their Sims house, and oh. then the game starts, you know? And then they slowly watch everything get repossessed because they built this perfect house with the perfect wallpaper and all the perfect stuff. And mm -hmm. like their sim is like, has no job. And well, so they can't live in their perfect house. And they realize somewhat too late, perhaps, the, the folly of the modern world and that things are not free. True. Or they realize the truest folly of, of, them, of their selves. They do not have a painting goblin in the basement. Exactly. That's how you beat that game. You just have a painting goblin over and over and over again. What's weird is is the person who is the painting goblin. Um, I'm fine with it. You're fine with the painting goblin. I mean, someone. Oh always no, I'm, to... I'm fine being the painting goblin. Oh. Every every house has to have one. True. I mean, what else was I gonna do? Uh, true, and, and if you know painting's your hobby and you can make a good living out of your hobby, you know that be that painting goblin. All right, let's get the dog back out and try not to die this time because... Well, it's one of those things. You may be a goblin, but the paintings are great. Yeah. Yeah, Sunshine, we're playing Mega Man 3 on the original hardware. There is no emulation here. All right, here we go. Yeah, let's try this one more time. A little go away. Oh, he dropped it. Look at this little guy. Yeah. 
This this that that guy just trying to stop you from having fun. Yeah, you know those uh I don't want to say like a bike lock, I guess. But uh good, I got the air. Uh and oh air torpedo. What fun. Disguise in the oh, cloud man. until you piss it off. Well that's how you disguise aerial torpedoes, of course. I mean it's I mean it, it looks like a humble, friendly cloud, but no. Air torpedo. Is it's going to come get not. you. It is discount bullet bill. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wiley saw Mario. He's like, oh, I bet I could copy that. Yes. I think it is. Uh, I'm going to say this. Wiley for someone who has a German accent, as far as scientists go, mm -hmm. his inventions are kind of sad. I, I see no I, I see no terror weapons. You can have well, a crowd scientist in that sort of capacity, you know. Well, the terror weapons are supposed to be his robot masters. I mean, look at this. This guy, set, this guy shoots snakes. How terrifying is that? I mean, okay, if a guy came up to me with, like, a gun that was loaded with snakes, yeah, I'd be terrified. But if there's just one of them and it, and it doesn't, like, herald a new world order, I'd be like, oh, well, he's probably not bulletproof. Ah, shit. Dude, Snake Man. <sighs> He's a dangerous guy. He, oh yeah, he is. It is. It's, oof. Terribly out of practice in this game. Terribly out of practice. All right. Uh, oh, now we're starting. Okay. Vectron's starting to get the Mega Man lore here. Okay. Technically zero with the Maverick virus. Okay. We got to re rewind that back a little bit. Zero. Are you saying that zero and the Maverick virus are the most dangerous weapon? Is that what you're talking about? Because, yes, Zero is Wily's uh, final creation. Uh, and I, I know nothing about Mega Man, but I know a lot about Strategic War. And I, I, will, I will say this. Like, yeah, terror weapons are not efficient ever. Um, but they are a statement of the regime that constructs them. Um, it, from uh, Professor uh, Bull's uh, super weapon and Project Babylon and all the Heart Project stuff, you know, down down to Wunderwaffe and and all of that thing. Um, yeah, I mean, super weapons should be fun, whimsical, and impractical. And it, they they have to check all those those things. And you you have to have like jetpack trooping. You know, you, you you have to have something that's crazy, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see that. Now, while he really doesn't want to have that much fun, I guess, with his super weapons, he is, he's just looking for world con conquer the world domination. All that How can you say you're into world dominance without having, like, uh, all lady assassin squad, you know, or <laughs> jetpack people or giant parades? You gotta, you gotta go for a motif here. Yeah, you do need to show it off. You do need to show off that, you do need to show off that, that glint. You're right. Well, it's it's all about presentation. I mean, like you, you gotta you gotta you gotta like get a deal with Hugo Boss, or you gotta you gotta get some good parade stuff, or some good music, or uh, you know, like jetpacks. Again, uh, yeah. spectacles of the eye kind of help sell these programs, uh, especially as dictators go. Yeah, because they gotta sell to the people you know that you know are running them. But then again, though, you really don't need morale boosters when you're you know using robots. That's well, the other thing. Well, sure, sure, sure. But can Stryker, yes. this is your stream, and, and you may direct the conversation however you like, but I would like your permission to petition uh, chat um, um, and ask them a question. All right, yeah. All right. Uh, Sunshine Temple makes a good point. Will this look impressive when I threaten the UN? That's a great that's a great point. But I'm saying, like, let's say everyone out there gets to come up with one super weapon that you threaten the UN with. Okay, so everyone out there, I imagine you guys, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine you have your cat or your dog or whatever in your lap and you turn around and you're facing the world leaders and you're like, ah, well, you will do what I say thanks to my... X. What? What is your thing? Let's let's see what you got. Yeah. I would like you to read these off as they kind of come in. Okay. Someone named Beaky Boo says, if you want a good synopsis of Mega Man lore, an ancient web comment Bob and George is worth a read. Okay. Oh, wow. It says, uh, it is the reason every aughts web comic was a video game sprite comic. It is also historically significant in how it poisoned internet culture for a while. Interesting observation. So far, 
Atlas size urban mech. I'm sorry, I'm told that's called the Urban Lord. People have made it. Uh, ozone Lord bomb. Bacon sandwich. Ozone right. bomb is in bomb that eats the ozone layer. Smart squirrel army. Super star destroyer. Mind control device. Gosh, some bitch. Uh, cat tornadoes to scratch everything. Gross stupidity among the mass populace. Uh, I think <laughs> I've got that. Well, yeah, he said, it's already been released. Only I can stop it. So he's threatening, like, ah, you've already fallen into my trap. So oh, who knows I see. if it's him. I see. Right. Uh, he's he's taking the turns... uh, document hat approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a raid that turns bones into cheese. Uh, a unified into... cat army. Forced truth ray. Um, okay, let me... Nuclear th- Furbies. <laughs> Carnivorous musk deer. That one's interesting. Okay. Uh, what about HK forty seven? Yeah, that's a good one. What about the Kit Kat you cannot break? Oh, an unbreakable Kit Kat. Like yes. you leave it out, and people are like, ah, oh, Kit Kat, and they try to break it, and it breaks their fingers. It's, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah just, there you go. Yeah, yes. you could not oh, break off a, a it, piece of that yeah. Kit Kat bar. So it's like a it's like a military weapon. You like lay it out on a trail, and some soldiers are walking around. They find it, and they all try to break it, and like bust their fingers, and they can't use rifles anymore. Yeah, it, it's it's like when you glue a quarter on the floor and just watch people try and pick it up. They just can't. Or when you glue a pair of flip flops onto the floor at the beach, and people walk by like, "Oh, hey, free shoes!" They well, slip their feet someone, and try and take off with free shoes, and just end up flat on their face. Someone suggested earthquake bombs. We already have those. Uh, they come in megatons. And then in World War II, we had those, and they were just tall boys. Um, they launch uh, manhole covers into outer space. Uh, yeah, we've we, well, that's one application. Um, and the now, I know a lot of people have talked about that as uh, earthborne defense uh, and stuff like that. But the problem is, is that's not exactly uh, a, a precision thing. Now, if it was done in um, flak, you don't need precision, like a field of them. But as discussed well, well, previously, sh- as possible defense for Van Zant, it would be impractical. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where, like, if Van Zant needed defense, it, it it'd be like, eh, just wait till they come down here. <laughs> they gotta come down here if they want it. You know, it's it's <laughs> that was so bad. Come take it, just as long as it's not drinking night. Yeah, it's just like I'll get to you when I get to you. That's, we need we need that health. Oh, that's right. With Shadow Man, we not only we get Shadow Blade, we got Rush Marine. And what that is is see, I oh, I, I think on. that if I was a super villain, yes. I would turn around and I would just be like, you know what I did, and I would see what they admitted that they think is wrong. That way, I could just lean into it, but also get an awareness as to how little they pay attention. You know, or, that would be my UN thing. I'd be like, you know what I did. And they'd be like, oh my God, you poisoned the water supply of that? And I was like, D- no, good God, who did that? And they're like, Nestle. And I'm like, ugh. I'll take care just, of Nestle for you. Or just take notes. Yeah. Now, let's see. Barry Bond clones? Barry Bond clones. Yeah, good one. Oh, geez, these things are back. Oh, man. So what's this guy's gimmick? Does he just does he just have bad things? And uh, he's Sparkman, is this saying you like in a power plant? Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Ah, damn it. Okay, I got to use the iframes to my advantage there, I think. Am I dead? Yes, I'm dead there. Yeah, because those spikes will kill you in one hit. Obviously, the pit kills you in one hit. But if you get damaged, uh, you... We'll be able yeah, to touch the spikes. Flooding the world with hot nacho cheese, pretty effective. Hot butter, very effective. How mm. you can dispense it, though? Uh, Human homing paper cut airplanes. Now that is di- diabolical. Who would <laughs> landmines <laughs> full of ghost pepper sauce? <laughs> oh, I was just... oh. Someone steps on it, and there's just a hiss, and they're like, it just hisses. Just painful. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. No, no, that just not lamb. You, you just leave the cafeteria full of the one chip chips, just in bowls. Oh, no. 
Like that would be that would be a really dangerous trap. Like you just leave a bag of chips that looks innocent by the side of the road, and the soldiers take it, and like it's just dusted with the hottest stuff ever. So <laughs> your ah, forces hear some guy in the dark going, <laughs> just having a bad day. I don't like it now. We'll come back to that one second. I feel a bag of full of Doritos. Yeah, that just moved. See, if I had to design a landmine, I, I would design it with two steps. Step okay. one, a, a bunch of little arms come out and it clamps around your foot. Step two, it activates the radio rocket on the bottom of the landmine. <laughs> well, that, that just, I mean, that's like, that's just, an enhan- that's Bear Trap 2.0. Well, no, I'm just saying it grabs their foot and mm-hmm. then it goes somewhere really fast. And and then and then they're attached to it. So you hear a sprung and then they go fly. And they go fly really, really fast somewhere. It's like, uh, not the Wilhelm scream, but uh, the Howie scream. They just go flying off. Okay, improving then. Uh... More like an upgo. Uh, you know what? I think something else. Let's see. What other improvements could we make to outdated technology then? To, if, if we oh, want to bring God. That? Well, all right, sure. All right. Um, I'm sure you as a man uh, in the Midwest enjoy uh, toaster pastry, an Eggo waffle, and yes. the occasional piece of toast, I would presume. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and now, here's, here's one thing I've noticed. Like, yes. the toaster... Whenever you see the picture of the toaster on the box, they show that, you know, the inside's all glowing, toasty hot, right? Mm-hmm. And then you get your toaster, you take it out, you put your toast in it, and it gets a little warm, and it comes out, and it's like, shit. So you put it on high, and it comes out just burned. And you're yeah. like, what the fuck? So here's my idea. What if we did a toaster where instead of taking eight minutes to slowly burn something or make it very dry, what if we did a toaster that could do it in one pass? And I mean like three, two, one. I, I, want, to, I want to hear a capacitor whine. I want the lights to die and I want to click toast. That's what I want. That is my, that is my achievement. I don't care if it has a 1200 watt capacitor. I just want three, two, one, like a glow plug for toast. You know what I mean? That's okay, what I want. Yeah, yeah okay, I see that, yeah. Now I, it, I want it to be able to cook a steak, tote, whatever I put in that. If it fits in the slot, it cooks. I want it to be the BC the VCR of food. That's what I want. Okay, so pork chops in there. Okay. Now you see, here's an interesting thing. Uh, the toaster I mostly use. Uh, I don't have that issue where you know you put it down, waits, and then hope to. Hope yeah, but to do God you have an old, do you have an old Westinghouse or metal toaster? <laughs> My on-off switch for the toaster is the plug, yes. That's what I thought. So you open it's the like, door. Those toasters, yeah, those toasters will dry enamel. Those are great toasters. They they will they will cook anything. It's it's like I, I made a point. I think that good waffle irons stopped being made in the 70s. Oh yeah. A um, lot of, a and, lot of good things stopped being made in the 70s because uh there oh is God. this yeah. one uh YouTube channel I do watch. Um called uh, Technology Connections. Uh, it's very interesting. The guy goes into the electronics of new things, old things. And one of them, I believe, is called the Sun Crest or Sunrise Toaster. It uses, a, I think, a thermal coupling. You, you, you put the toast down, you set it, and then as it toasts, when the toast gets hot enough, uh, there's an automatic setting on it that just instantly raises it up to... Put the toast at your very perfect requested level. It doesn't sit down for too long. That. It doesn't sit down for I, too I think short. I saw that. I think I saw that clip of that, just showing like this is the highbrow of toasters. Yes, and, and like, that was made. Ba- I think they stopped making those back in like 72, 73 or something like that. Well, what's what's fucking crazy is like in the seventies, uh, they had they had a lot of really pretty decent home equipment. It's uh, my parents had a washer dryer from the seventies mm-hmm. that was unkillable. Oh, yeah, it yeah. died two years ago. And they were like, we feel like we should have a funeral for this because we bought it in the 70s, like in 78. They bought yeah. these things and they are unkillable. Like it, it got serviced twice. 
Yeah, I mean, in, yeah, the old, I mean, in let, fifty years, e- yeah. either that, yeah, that's something you hold a funeral for by burying it, or you use it from a trebuchet. That's yeah, the, really the only thing worthy of that. The only death I think it was. No, well, and the old waffle irons were like that. The old waffle mm-hmm. irons, there was no on-off switch or shit. There was no timer. There was a yeah. light, and you'd plug it in, and it says, this is drawing amperage. That's it. You plug that motherfucker in, it was like, boo, and it was, yeah, it, it meant waffles are imminent. Waffles and are that incoming, thing, you have no choice. Yeah, no, that those things are great, because you could put anything in them, and they would they would definitely change the world. Yeah. Like, like the microwave did. And I do recall you telling the story of, you know, your old microwave where you turned the knob and that was just on for hopefully however many minutes it said it was on for. Uh, my- well, yeah, the, the, the mechanical microwaves are like that. Yeah. And especially as they, oh, wow, hey, someone gave $6.90. Thank nice. you, Levidian. Very nice. nice. Thank you for that. Oh, yes, I was going to get to that. So, all right. I, I love how he says, can't forget the Presto Burger. I got something worse than that, bud. The Presto Topper. It is a handheld gun that you put butter in. I'm and you pull the trigger and it sprays the hot butter like like baby powder over whatever. So you have like a butter gun. Go nice. ahead and Google the Presto Topper. That is a real product. We, we were looking at it like the. There's also the Presto Hot Dogger, uh-huh. which uh, Squick sent us. I want one of those. Uh, I want one of those. Yeah. The Presto Hot Dogger as the, the two prongs that you bridge the circuit with a hot dog with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really want one of those hot doggers. You do not. All it does is make noise. If you wanted to know what hot dogs sounded like as they died, the hot dogger oh, will answer that. I, I, I do have a hot dog related story as well. As well. Please. Slap chop, yeah. Okay. Uh, first, let, Slap let chop's the, not bad. No, no. Okay. Let me get to the, uh, let, let, me, let me get the microwave story first because um, my parents ha- did have one of those old turn knob microwaves that, you know, you just turn the knob and prayed you didn't die because you could just, you know, feel the radiation coming out from the, side, from the door. Oh, yeah. But, oh, uh, you yeah. Know, they were also like one of the first people that they knew, you know, between all their friends, everything like that, to have a microwave. So they went on vacation one time, and they had their friend Bob house sit. And uh, my dad used to work construction, so a lot of times he'd put things in the fridge and then, you know, put them in his lunchbox, and by the time he'd have lunch, it'd be all warm. Well, Twinkies were one of those things he put in there. So while Bob was watching the house, he's like, oh, this looks like a good idea. I'll get out of a Twinkie, you know, I'll use this new thing, the microwave, to warm it up. So he puts it in the micro, he puts the Twinkie in the microwave, warms it up, I th- can't be for more than a minute and uh, takes it out and has a bite long story short he gets treated for i think second degree burns on his tongue in the hospital because the inside was just magma when he bit into it i remember back in the day yes uh if if you were a bastard and and you were like drunk or whatever you, you could deep fry a hot pocket and if you forgot what that was like that is like in fact drinking magma yeah. the inside of those turn into fire oh yeah hot pockets those are those are a science oh but uh before we get back into food science which is my tostinos pizza rolls uh hot dog story um we did used to make uh, hot dogs in the microwave and my my dad did it fairly often and uh so okay get rid of this dog um and it was just you know one of those little late lazier no- oh did that disappear fuck that disappeared oh never mind then uh so it was just you know lazier night we we're kind of on our own just me my dad and my sister making dinner and things like that and so my dad you know made up a hot dog like oh yeah i guess we'll have some hot dogs well, he puts out what he does is he'll wrap the hot dog up in uh uh paper towel wrap it up Put it in the hot, put it in the microwave about one minute at, I think, 70 to 60 power. And it's just, you know, comes out good enough. Well, my sister really didn't know, doesn't know about the power setting, or at least didn't know about the power setting on the microwave at the time. So she puts it in, hits go, one minute. She goes, hey, Dad, how do you know when the hot dog is done? And just on cue, we hear from the microwave, sweet pop, when it makes that noise. 
And it was just oh my. Per- yeah, it was just perfect timing of the whistling hot dog. It whistled because it was done. Whistling wieners. Yeah. I, I remember if if you want to talk about like like weird weird things you can do. I saw somebody cook a steak in a big toaster. And they did it and it wasn't terrible. They they actually seasoned both sides of it. They put foil on the underside of it and they <laughs> stuck it in the toaster sideways. And there was a bit of smoke. But I will say this, they did throw that toaster away afterwards. It was nearing the end of its life, and they said, time to make steak. It's a sacrifice. Oh, we got a penguin. I don't know why there's just a mechanical penguin churning out smaller penguins, but there is. You know, again, um, the weapons of this wacky world are hilarious. Um, I, I wish, you know, more conflict was sorted with robots that did functionally nothing. <laughs> I, I think that would be interesting. Very true, very true. I mean, he's just shooting penguins and they're going into the wall and dying. That is their purpose in life. Ah, power pellet. I'd make a Linux joke, but I'm, I'm afraid the one person who'd get it would not stop talking about it for eight hours on the Linux forum, so I won't. Hey, it's, the one, it's one of the two water areas where we can use the submarine dog. Splendid. That's just a big fish. More big fish. Big fish and dragonfly. Oh, we're running low on power. Let's just jump out of the water on the dog and just flop around. Yeah, because unfortunately this is a constant use one. And oh, we're running low. There we go. Don't worry. You'll get it. You're smart. Oh, yeah. You know how to do this. Oh, there goes the dog. Oh, we got another bit donation. We get this wow, time. Thunderclap Sasquatch says, My family doesn't have ancient appliances because I was the first person in two generations born in a house hooked up to water and electricity. Well, congratulations for being the first person in two generations to have that because that sounds like pretty fucking awesome to be somebody who's managed to like jump up that far in access to technology. Yeah. It's got to be pretty fucking wild, dude. Oh, like, yeah, it is. Like, oh. I really, sh- I really should talk to my grandparents a little more often, but my grandma just turned 90 last... I mean, not, not 90. She turned 100 last month. And just imagine what she has seen in that life, in oh, that time. Man. Yeah. I, I spoke with a guy who was 105 once, and he would say that just imagine, like, seeing a car once in the first 10 years of your life and then seeing a million of them. Yeah. And then being stuck in traffic. You know, when you used to be the thing that got stuck you between towns was just time and distance and mm-hmm. getting there. And you would visit and meet people along the way, and it took a while to get anywhere. Um, he said that's just replaced with sitting in traffic and everyone staring ahead. And he was like, it is the weirdest thing in the world. Kick his ass snakes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's interesting, too. And uh, I watched, like, a chain of documentaries on YouTube uh, a couple of weeks ago about the... Uh, how steam engines revolutionized Great Britain. Oh, and yeah. just you know, yeah, how yeah. everything just was able to advance so quickly. Yeah, from Watts to Brunel. That is a wonderful study of engineers and engineering and works programs, yes. Yeah. Why do astronauts use Linux? They can't open windows in space. Okay, fair. Woo! Yes, uh, correct. I pulled the... Uh, sound from the game right now sunshine because uh i was just having audio issues between hearing text and the game so i've got yeah, the uh, was, audio pulled right now it's 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 uh it's it's just me being old and ruining things don't worry about it no no it's not you text it, it's it's me oh, cool. not uh giga strength wait giga strength redeem stretch hold on oh, let me do okay. my back hold up yeah I, I could probably stand up too so <sighs> Stretch there. Ah. All right, there we go. That's good. That's my shoulder. All right. That sounds like it, yeah. Oh, we got a hydrate. Oh, two hydrates. Oh, shit. We got three hydrates. That cooldown is gone. Oh, man. All right, there's one. Two. All right. There, I had some hydrate. Yeah, and I'm having some. uh, well, it's it's one of those jokes, um, yeah. That 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 somebody said like, 
you know, um, someone wrote in and said, I I'm having trouble finding a girlfriend. And I said, well, I don't have any good relations or success with that, but I will tell you this much, you know, when you're like 16 and you're, you're young, yeah. you're, you're like booba, you know, simple stuff. Oh, I don't. When you, yeah, yeah. But when you, when you get older, um, you start thinking of like, Hey, can you like fix my back or put a arm back in the socket, like shoulder wise? Or mm -hmm. like, can you recognize the signs of a stroke? Like, yeah, these how are, these are the things. Are you? That, right, right. Could you right. change just your own tire if I wasn't around? Well, not not just that. I mean, like, hey, um, do do you know what burning plastic smells like uh, from somebody's really bad electrics? You know, just little little survival things. Like, hey, yeah. can you? Can you deal with the occasional crazy nonsense that pops up in life? Like, on a scale of zero to five, how much do you scream at the unknown? <laughs> like, it, the and, older and you, will get, you scream with me at the unknown. Right, right. the the older The older you get, the more it sounds like you're applying for someone to go on a sh on Shackleton's expedition. You're like, pay low wages, low possible death, <laughs> return unlikely. Inquire within. <laughs> uh, but great bunk yeah, it's, Exactly. It, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, everything hurts at, past a certain age. That's just a fact. And yeah. so I, I, was, I always remind people, like, they were like, oh, I'm looking for a cute girlfriend. I was like, find, find somebody who's like a therapeutic masseuse or, or, or somebody who, who has a, a good set of skills. <laughs> like, setting a back straight yeah well i mean there, there is that there is that song you know if you want to be happy for the rest of your life never make a pretty woman your wife ah well no that's fair that's fair it's no i i just complain i'm i'm just kvetching uh but as as far as it goes i i always try to tell fans like don't ask me these questions because i don't have fucking answer for myself i'm the worst person to ask Text next question. It'd be like, text, how, what do I do with... Well, it's like if someone said, what do I do with a million dollars? I don't even know what that fucking looks like. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I Can know... You, oh, for the theoretical, yeah. I mean, I, I already know what I do with a million dollars. And, you know, that's, you know, pay off my sister's house because Lord knows she needs it. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the thing, though, is it's like... If someone really gave you a million dollars, what would you do with it? You'd be like, well, I'd pay some things off and this and that. I mean, it's instantly. Yeah. We, we go back to like the, well, you know, I got to take care of this or that. Instead of like, I'd buy a car. We'd be like, well, I don't know. That seems like a bit much car for me. I mean, we're boring. Yeah. Past well, a certain I mean, age, you, buy, again, you buy the car after the necessity is what it is. What's, it's not only that. It's past a certain age. Past a certain age, it, it's it's like we said earlier with with the girlfriend thing. When you're young, it's simple. Yeah, like oh yeah. if you're young, and someone says, "Here's a million dollar," you know, and go spend million dollar, you go, "I have million dollar. How I spend?" Well, when you're 16, it's like fast car, go places, you know, experiences. Mm -hmm. When you're older, you're like, "God, you know, I really should be careful." Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's and I was like, God, do I really need to spend on that? I mean, I've already got a reliable car and it's paid off, so I guess I don't need another one. Right. That's just that, added well, that's, insurance. That was, that was the thing is somebody asked me like, oh, wouldn't you like a faster car? Wouldn't you like X or Y? And I was like, I don't know. I've got like four more years of the warranty. And like, that's just how my brain thinks now. When I was young... I would name a hundred cars I was thinking of and why each was coolest. But mm -hmm. I'm saying that, you know, when it, it changes perspective and, and like the girlfriend, like the car, like a million dollars, it, it becomes one of those things that over time it, it just changes. And right. I yeah. will say this, having experienced a variety of all of those things, I, I, will, I will say the best things are usually the most reliable ones. Like, it's, it's just one of those things. It's like, what kind of car do I like? The one that always turns on. <laughs> the one that doesn't leave me. Hey, thanks for the follow, AB Page. But that's that's the idea. Is as you, as you get as you get older, um, 
as you get older, it's one of those things where you start looking for stability. And I'm not sure if that's just old or experiences, because when I was young, I couldn't fathom having these points of view. But now that I'm old, older, rather, I should say, it's kind of strange how that perspective has kind of changed me in a sense. Yeah. I can't remember the point of turning, though. I can't ever remember where I was like, well, it's time to be responsible. And for that, it's and that is in and of itself is different for everybody too. Like, well, yeah, yeah, it's it's just interesting because do you remember when you started to act like an adult? Thanks, Kay. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's, that's that's my phone message going off there. Uh, the Power Rangers ringtone there. Yes, I suppose we are there, fools. There, Super Chief. Yeah, let me catch up on questions because yeah. I'm sitting there yeah, thinking see, about yeah, see what that. We got there. Oh, yeah. APB, uh, thanks and welcome. Let's see. Uh, Sidoc says he can't imagine me as being, being uh, young. Okay, cool. Yeah, Test Square says, million bucks. I'm buying new tires like I was going to do anyway. <laughs> and people are like, yeah, it's fucking taxes would eat you. Of course. Master and you know, God says, bless them. Sometimes when people do win the lottery and they say, oh, what are you going to do with it? And you know, like I said, God bless them. Some of the people are like, oh, you know, my car needs a new... Needs a new alternator, so I think I'm going to buy me one of those. All right, let's just cheat this part. Oh, yeah. Let's use the jet. Jet dog, let's go. So here's the thing, is that, like, I'm sitting here going through these, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Master Mayhem. All that's cool, but you know what's really cool, kids? Financial independence. <laughs> like, <laughs> amen. He gets it. It's, it's exactly what I'm talking about. No, um, Grant, I mean, after, you know, I help out, you know, my parents pay this off, pay that off well, kind of, of course, things, save this. Of course, you know. of course, of course. I mean, you know, I'm either going to buy the one that's already built or I'm going to make the replica of the Ecto-1 because I am just that big sure. of a fucking nerd. And with that kind of money, you could have like a perfect replica made. No, no, no trouble, you know, yeah. no trouble at all. But what, what my question is, is like, when do you remember the age where you started to think like an adult? Like, because I personally can't. I remember when I was very childish, and then I remember all of a sudden I was like, well, I better buy new pants with this paycheck because... Honestly, I well, think I do. It's about that time of year. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, I think I do. I was either a senior of high school or not long after a senior in high school where I kind of realized things because my parents got ortho orthodontal work for uh, for me. Right. You know, and, and, and that's not cheap. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's not. And, you know, we're... I mean, I want to say we're probably they were probably uh, lower middle, mid middle class ish, I think, and just it just finally done. And after all that, you know, I really didn't uh, do much you know, follow up, like you know, the retainer and all that kind of shit. And then just one day, it just finally dawned on me about like you know just how much money and everything they spent on me and things like that. It's like wow, it's like kind of a jerk for not doing that. You know, I really need to start thinking about more or less that kind of stuff. So I, I, like I said, it wasn't long after high school is when I started thinking more rationally as far as like how money goes and spent and things like that. And it's, it also did help uh, getting a debit card because I was terrible with spending money because it's part of the reason well, I don't I have a credit everyone, card. Well, everyone has yeah. to be at first. And, oh, yeah. And I think and it's it's one of those things where you have to learn by doing, right? It's mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and, I, and the, for the fan... For me, that was the, it was having a debit card and not actually right. physically seeing the money I spent. That's what right. did because you know there because I used to have a decent uh, savings, you know, but you know, oh well, you overdrafted, so we're just going to pull from your savings, pull from your savings. Well, when the time came to actually dip to my savings, you know, it basically wasn't there because it was all on overdraft fees and you know yeah. covering my ass. Well, and I, I get you on that. It's it's one of those things where like you learn an adult lesson by doing adult stuff. And so I think that all of these hard lessons that people learn and, and they go, oh man, I can't find what I'm looking for. Like my fan said, I said, maybe what you're looking for isn't what you need because you've learned all these hard lessons and mm -hmm. you found out, well, like obviously what doesn't work. You, you found the things that make you upset or sad or what have you, and that's fine. Now you know what doesn't work. So you just got to keep at it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and And... But I, I think all those hard lessons are what really awesome. make you an adult, like, you know, fucking up with money or, you know, just just being an idiot or something like that. And mm -hmm. that's just kind of part of it. But it's it's one of those funny things where I watch people 
who will pursue almost single-mindedly something like a car. They'll say, mm-hmm. I need this car. I need this thing. Yeah. And then once they get it, they're like, I have the car. And they become that guy. You're like, oh, yeah, that guy that's got like the Hellcat. Yeah. And, and then that's it. Like their life has stopped because yeah, that, yeah. that was they achievable. Don't... Welcome to Existential Dread with Texan Striker. Well, that's, that's what, yeah, it's, sorry. I, I'm just <laughs> no, sitting no, there thinking. It's, it's fine. I like it's, having real conversations. It's just, they well, just get I mean, going and they just get interesting. Music. You just keep going on them too. Oh, hey, make a head friend. And meanwhile, well, we'll, I always, meanwhile, I'm shooting tadpoles out of eggs while we're talking about what we do with what we do with money and how we have grown up throughout the years. Well, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where you have to look at what life has taught you, and every so often you need some time out to just try to figure that out. And usually, it's after life beat the shit out of you. And so, I'm sitting there thinking about you know this whole idea, and I'm trying to think for the love of me when. When was that day where oh, all of a sudden I was like, you know what? It's time to be an adult. You know? it, it's a hard line. Uh, and as I said previously, let's, let, let me swing back into the game here. As I said previously, okay, now I'm going through these levels again. Now we're going to be going after the uh, robot masters from Mega Man 2. And I believe this first guy here is going to be Flashman. And Flashman in that game uh, could stop time. So he's gonna he's gonna walk around for a little bit, stop time, freeze me in place, shoot some barrages at me. But I believe uh, the needle can is his weakness in this game. Yeah, there's five minutes. He's that's supposed to be like a stopwatch he's holding there, and like his essence of programming is going into this knot boss. Yeah, it's, okay, that's yeah, hurting a little bit more. Oh, yeah, froze time. Blah 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 blah. Pew pew. So the loss is the first really adult moment he had yes. was when he filled up his car after his first job and mom and dad not paying for it anymore. And he looked at how much the tank of gas costs and was like, well, that could have been a video game. It's like, yeah, yeah there's an adult yeah. moment. Yeah. Well, let's farm these guys a little bit. There's a little break in the ceiling that's going to drop these little dudes out. I'm going to farm them a little bit, try and get some more health real quick. Yeah, Wang in place says, you know, Tex, if you own an M18, there's really not much keeping you from getting more money. Yeah, if if I owned a tank with a live gun or a tank destroyer with a live gun, that's true. Um, however, uh, as, as much as that would be neat, uh, I, I don't know of anyone who is just handing out free armor vehicles uh, at, at all. Striker, do you, do you know anyone with a just free tank? Free Show armor vehicles? Well, I mean, I guess yeah. I could ch- check Harry's army surplus. They're not all that far from here, but I don't think those yeah. are kept in that much, at least civilian surplus. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I think you might find boots and hats and stuff. Boots, hats, my first pair of overalls for my Ghostbusters cosplay. And those are overalls, yeah. not a flight suit. I didn't actually think of a flight suit, flute suit <laughs> until recently, actually. And there are a lot more pockets in that, and it's a lot more fun to carry things around that one. Oh, where was it with the MIGs, Albania? Well, Albania was uh, low-balling, and so we there was not a lot of money to come up with at all. Uh, they were like $1,000 a plane. We um, tried, though. Yeah, we tried. We really tried a lot. A piece. Okay, that can be my one. RN Jesus has forsaken me. Carry on. Oh, look, more water. Yay, more dog. More giant. Ooh. Uh, that's not, oh, let's uh, flounder up and get this one here. Eh. Ow, that actually got me. And get rid of the dog. Bye, bye, Rush. Thank you. This is actually the first Mega Man game where he could slide. Mega Man 1 and 2, he could not do that. Well, sliding is a very tactical skill. All right, let's try and get some health from these guys here. But yeah, yeah, if you want a uh, just... Willy's, if you want a Willy's MB, and you want a modern one, you can actually break uh, Mahindra, which is an Indian company, makes copies of the Willy's MB that are like ninety nine percent copies. Over here, they can't be driven as cars per se, uh, because they're not road legal. They don't have like modern safety equipment. They are pretty much a Willy's Jeep, and you can buy them as farm vehicles. In some states, that allow you to license them as such, but they are a diesel Willy's Jeep from World War Two. Oh Mahindra. yeah. I... I think my friend's dad, that's like one of his dream vehicles, is to get a, is to get a Willys Jeep. Now, he'd like one yep. in a crate, but that's going to be damn near impossible to find one still crated. Yeah. 
I don't even think the Smithsonian has one of those. Now, yeah, a crated Willie's Jeep would be freaking amazing, but that would be great. It, it's I do it's like one of those the, things where I, I hear people going, oh, yes, there's piles of them. And I'd be like, all right. Um, show them. Yeah, sh show us where we can get one. Because I would love to have a classic vehicle like that. Yep. A I lot mean, of people would. You, you know me. I'm a collector of odd and Fun unique. stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah, fun fun things. And a Willie's Jeep is actually really cheap to run. Yeah. I think just about anybody would like a Willie's Jeep or some kind of classic car. It's Bubble Man. I do believe spark works on this guy. It should. He's the guy whose ass I would kick first in uh, Mega Man 2. Go after Bubble Man and Flash Man. Oh, Asinte says he owns a 36-packard uh, town car, and he built it for his Call of Cthulhu LARP group. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, Packards are great old cars. Um, it's it's uh, that, That's pretty fucking sweet. I always, wanted a, I always wanted an old Hudson, um, but it's it's one of those things where, like, with classic cars, it's one of those things where you, you think, oh, that'd be nice to have, but then you look at the price and you're like, yeah. Well, no, it, 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 it would depend on their condition, yeah. Like, I know there were some classic cars for sale up in northern Michigan a few years back. Uh, I want to say, I mean, they may, I don't think there are more, no more than, uh, more than 50, 50,000 each. Well, that seems like a good price. Uh, who knows how well they actually ran to kind of thing at that. Yeah. Uh, there's sorry. a lot of those, a lot of those classic cars are great. If like it's a GM classic car, because you can get crate engines replaced for anything. All the parts yeah. are there and, and you can get pick apart, pull apart, OEM parts, aftermarket parts, fiberglass parts, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, same with Ford. Um, yeah, for, yeah, Ford. And, if you know the model number, they can pull that off. They, you know, they can track it and pull it off the off shelf somewhere. Yeah, they they'll have it. Um, but like, if if you're sitting there like with something that's not made anymore, it's it's like good luck. All right, let's get a safety net. Hey, look, I can actually make it. What well, safety net dog just in case, but yeah. I mean, I'm really not wow, like we've we you know we've got the uh international auto show here in here in Michigan, in Detroit, which is nice to go to, but if I had a choice though, well I do have a choice, I would rather go to the Auto Rama, which is the classic like the big classic car show you know where you've got all the custom rods and everything like that racers and all the restored old vehicles and those are just gorgeous uh oh yeah this oh is yeah metal i mean first. well I, I like seeing various cars but like if i could have anything if if i could have anything i i'm a simple man i'd, I'd like to have like a ford f-150 or an f-100 with a straight six or a v8 and just three on the tree uh, as simple as could be you know automatic or even manual i wouldn't care just simple as can be i'm, I'm just very uncomplex oh this is oh here's fun falls fun falls in mega man just spikes all along the walls you make one slip up there you go look at that all I know, it's... Ugh. That wasn't a halfway point. Fuck! I got this. It's okay. You got this. It'll be alright. Boing! We got this. Yeah. But no, I, I like simple old vehicles. I, I, I'm the kind of guy who, before they all disappeared, um, I, I liked old 113, 116, 126 body Mercedes, um, 123 body uh, 80s Benzes, 70s and 80s Benzes, the old just simple six-cylinder cars, um, tough, strong metal. Yeah, I think But, my, you know, I mean, go ahead. As I think my dad had an old Buick LeSabre. I think it was a 67 or something like that. He bought off one of the guys at work and he used that for his for his work vehicle and that was nice that was nice i i like simple cars and it's it's one of those things where like it, people are like what what would you have if you had all the money in the world and i'd be like a beat to shit truck that no one will steal like that that would be it i would i would want something that just didn't have a straight panel in it 
Yeah. It, le- it, it lives forever, but it doesn't look like much. I, exactly. That's what I want. I want something that's just beat to shit and loud and, and simple. And that, that would be that would be ideal for me. But until then, I will live within my very simple car world. All right, I can do that twice. And then I gotta start farming up jewels. All right, let's see if I don't die this time. Man, you were just killing the shit out of these people. There we go. And hug the wall. Oh, someone says, remember those roller wheel shields, shoes? Oh, you mean Heelys. Yeah, Heelys. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I worked at a laser yeah. tag place when Heelys were like the big thing. And in the laser tag maze, we had uh, ramps and things like that. You know, we'd have to tell if we noticed a kid had Heelys on, you know, we'd have to tell him, you know, stay out. You know, first off, there was no running in the laser tag because, you know, we don't want to kids getting hurt. But, you know, if, if you got Heelys, yeah. you know, don't use them. Well, sure enough, now and again, we just hear, poof! Ah! Were you on your Heelys? Yeah. No! Well, let me tell you about Heelys. Uh, if you wear your Heelys, they can't hurt your feelies. So Heelys are very important. And someone said, oh, a rusted out 82 Corolla. I drove across this country with all my possessions uh, in an 82 or 89 Corolla with 300,000 miles on it. Um, I still miss that car. It was it was a good fucking car. It carbureted or not, that was that was a solid car. It had its quirks, but it was beautiful to me. Yeah. I like I like simple, sturdy things. Oh yeah, my Magnum was a was a horse workhorse. I mean, it was an 08, but I mean, I had that thing for almost ten years before uh, it became a not car. But uh, I mean, yeah. the only thing that really went wrong on it were uh, you know let's save that because I'm gonna. Actually, no, I got, I got E-Tanks. Hit the E-Tank. But yeah, no, the only thing that really went wrong with that, when I went to my mechanic off and on for uh, oil change, like, yeah, the tie rod's going to be going out. But uh, other than that, you know, is the tie rod or... No, I had a tie rod go, up, go out on me once more. But other than that, I was like, well, the struts is getting bad. But other than that, you know, this thing's still good. You know, it's still running. Like, well, let's keep it running. Keep it running, Stu. Fuck yeah. Well, exactly. It's... Um, oh, Mookie says Saturn SL1, 90 fucking horsepower. Yeah, I get you on that. Uh, a friend of mine had a Saturn SL1 going uphill, and it was like, you, oh, you're God. dropping gears going uphill, and it, it made noise going uphill. I mean, like, every panel in that car was vibrating loudly. Yeah. Hey, uh, Square, I still have a couple of my tech decks. So, I got you. I know you're there. Hey, Addy uh, DeLuca, he or she says, anyone remember fingerboards? I remember yeah. those. Yeah, those, those are tech decks. I got a couple of those. I've got uh, yeah. one with Ivysaur on it, and then I, I got a little Digimon one that came with uh, Megu Kabu Terimon on it. And he used to stand on like, yeah, it's awesome. I remember uh, pal of mine had a Saturn <laughs> SL1, and yeah. he knocked the panels out. Uh, and like he would... Uh-oh. It looks like we might have just lost Mr. Kick. It, it kicked me out. Thank you, Discord. Um, but no, the Saturn SL1 would, would kick people out. Like, uh, oh my God, that car. Like, panel, you could knock a panel off that and just replace it. It's like four fucking clips. The whole thing was just designed to be disposable. Now, did you ever go around to other cars of the same kind and swap parts when no one else was looking? Like you came with a... Uh, that's uh, called a Detroit swap, sir, and yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, kind of like what you do with Jeep Wrangler. It's just like, hey, I like that color door. Watch yeah, this. well, exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, in Detroit, we called that a Detroit swap. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, oh, man, the panel fell off my car. And you're like, ah, it's it? the same model. Yeah, really? Yeah, that's that, I've seen that in Detroit. That's that's a very Detroit thing. That's right. Yeah, you went to Wayne State, didn't you? Wayne State? I, found I it can funny. tell you. You went to Wayne State. Oh, damn. There we go. You went to Wayne State around the time I think my buddy went there. So we could have possibly, I mean, I don't think we did, but I mean, there's a time we could have possibly crossed paths before we even knew who each other was possible and i'm gonna tell you this much uh buddies on sixth by the detention center is the good one okay but well i say I, I i grew up uh at these cross streets right here 
And we've got and we've got one of the, we've got buddies like no more than like three or four miles from where my parents lived. In. No, my the the one the one that's good is the buddies on six by I shit you not the detention center or was and then Mots is on West, the burger joint. It, it looks like the um, White Castle that never aged. It's because White Castles don't. Oh fuck! There's a pit there. <laughs> Whoops. Why don't they just have lava in tanks? They just keep it for later? Or? Uh, I mean, it's probably being supplied to someone else's layer, maybe. But I mean, you, you got to keep the lava. You, you got to keep the lava rotate, rotating and flowing, so you know the earth doesn't get cold. That might be what it is. Because if you remember previously, oh, too close to the wall. Fuck. If you remember previously, am... there was lava in the background. And now it's not. No it's problem. Like no problem, change. Bowser. We're here to help. I, I have a question, though. I, I have a question for someone who's a great lakesman. Yes. So here's here's my question. Is, is all right, you are familiar being a Detroit man of the late effect, lake effect, right? Yes. All right, so you've got you've got the the lake effect in Chicago as well. Familiar with the lake effect, right? Yes. Canada as well. Very good with the lake effect. Right? Yeah. So so why is it that Wisconsin always acts like their winter's the worst despite the fact they have the same lakes and same winter you guys do? Uh Probably because in some parts of Wisconsin you actually need to put a heat stick in your in your engine in the uh, dipstick to keep the oil from freezing overnight. Now, granted, there oh, is oh. parts in, uh, in the, probably in the UP of Michigan here where you need to do the same thing. Not necessarily down. You know, let's get the uh, let's get the rush safety net here. But well, that's I, probably I, I why. You. But also, you have to remember, what do they do in Wisconsin for fun? They just drink because that's all they can do is drink right. because it is it's dark. What about ninety percent of the time there? Yeah. Okay. So. So. So, are you saying that their their excuse of the lake effect is is to encourage their other sport? Yes. It's what gives them their ability to play the sport. I believe. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay. The reason. They, every okay, time uh, I've heard. Well, every time I've heard Wisconsin is apocalyptically cold, and they say it's unlivable. I will go and look at a Green Bay Packers game and I will see someone with no shirt on covered in sleet yelling and I'm like you know okay it seems like you guys have adapted uh -huh. yeah well I mean that, that actually brings up a point is, is uh, Astus or a, a Centus looks like brag about Culver's yes Culver's is what gives them that ability they with, with, with them buttered with them, oh, that's not working. With, with them buttered buns they have for, from Culver's that allows them to grow such thick skin. Oh, this is going to hurt. Uh, they are able to withstand the cold temperatures shirtless in those games. It's also the cheese. The cheese on the head helps them so much as well. I've heard this as well. They, they are strange people with they unique are. customs. Yes, they have very unique customs. Ah, uh, fuck you, Woodman. Yes, the, the drinking also does help them withstand the, uh, you know, let's just end this now. It does help them withstand the, uh, it, it helps numb the weathers to them, the elements. Makes them numb to the elements. Uh, yes, the cheese, in fact, does act as a heating element. Because, I mean, let's be honest, you get some nice hot, warm cheese. That's a nice, nice and gooey. As it slowly melts over them, it then itself becomes an outer layer covering for them, which insulates them further. I may not be from Wisconsin, but I have my but my brother did work at uh, the uh, naval base in Illinois, and he lived at the Willie Border. So I do know some of the Wisconsin technology and tactics they use to combat the elements. I have seen some of these technologies myself, and I I am trying to wrap my head around them. It might just be because I am from the Midwest that I understand it and accept it far easier than others would from elsewhere in the country that might be part of it because while yes i did grow up in southeastern detroit um my grandparent my grandfather did have a place up in northern michigan up around mackinac so 
Ah, Mackinac Islands, where the fudge is and rich people are. Yes. Yes, indeed. Well, see, here's the thing. I used to live in rural Colorado mm-hmm. at about eh, eight and a half thousand feet altitude. And, okay. And so when people are like, ah, oh, it's cold, I'm like, so did you have like wind chill that literally killed people every year? Like people get lost and die and they're like, oh no, that's crazy. And I'm like, oh, I, I yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to judge those things, right? Oh yeah, it is because like you like when my sister worked down in Disney, she got a internship down at Disney when she was in college. Um, when she was down there, I think they drove down in April. Might, yeah, they might have been drove down in April, or maybe it was November. Uh, anyway, uh, her she she drove, drove down one day. She didn't want to drive alone, wanted her truck. Uh, they drive down there. It's maybe about I want to say. In the 60s, it has, to, oh, it has to be about in the 60s by the time they get down there. And they go to one of these more touristy places because she couldn't get on campus just yet at the time. And the girl working the counter was just in a hoodie, shivering away, just, you know, as cold as it can be. Meanwhile, her and my dad were in shorts, were in t-shirts and maybe shorts. Like, wow, look at that. Oh, it's Airman. I don't have leaves to clog his uh, fan with, though. Uh, but I do have Sparks to overload him. I think that's what I use on this guy anyway. Yes, Sparks is his weakness. Oop. Ah, dang it. But yeah, let's see. The UP is the same. Second it hits... 45, 50, that's, yep, flip five from t-shirts, you're, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I knew a guy who was from Alaska, right? Mm-hmm. Average guy, grew up in, God, I want to say Alabama. Okay. Went to Alaska, and he said year one was miserable. Year two, he was like, oh, why is it not as cold as it was last year? Because you adapted, dummy. So yes. he's like, year five, he's walking around in summer with Hawaiian shirts on, and it's like 50. And he's like, this is great. And then he comes back to America and he's like, God, the tropics. Oh, global warming. And it's like, no, you're used to Alaska, dumb dumb. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like back growing up, uh, back when I played Fantasy Star Online uh, with my constant group of friends there. Um, I knew someone that lived up in Canada. Then I knew someone who lived down in Puerto Rico. And you know, as we're talking temperature things like that, it's like, you know what? My like for the friend in Canada, you know, my cold is like a warm to me, whereas that would be a freezing to our friend that lived in Puerto Rico. Whereas in Puerto Rico, you know, the hot for her would have been boiling for my Canadian friend. And you know, just kinda like, yeah, what would have been hot for me and boiling for the Canadian friend. So it's just interesting how when you adapt to various places how things can get fun like that. There we go. Come, dog. But yeah, uh, it, it is always interesting because, you know, people are like, oh, it's too hot out right now. Well, you know, you're not going to be saying that in about three months when it's uh, 40 no, degrees. I'm, no, I'm with you. It's, it's just like you go to different places and like I've seen pictures of Arizona where like the trash can just starts to run like wax. And I'm going... <laughs> You know, not great. Like, maybe not for me. Because I grew up in Texas heat, but there's a limit. Like, I, I don't need to prove anything anymore. I know that I can take heat. But there's a certain limit where I just go, I don't need to live in a toaster oven. You but don't need also, to be- the nights in the desert are gorgeous. And they're cold. It's really interesting. Yeah, you don't need to make cookies on your dashboard. It, yeah, WVPL is like, I feel that's not real. I've seen the pictures, Diggs. It's real. But it was like also a it was also like a really epic one off day. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I have been to uh, Nevada once. I went to uh, Lo- I went to Vegas for a friend's thirtieth birthday because uh, you know she thought that was getting old, so she wanted to spend her thirtieth birthday in Vegas. And we went a nice Diggs. time. We went like I think the uh, second or first weekend of November, and it was like you know it was nice. It was very nice weather compared to you know what we were having here in Michigan. So if you so if you want to go to Vegas, you know what? Uh, I recommend going. You know, 
about uh, November, October ish time. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, no. Because, like, oh, I'll I'm, I'm finally get to experience a dry heat because growing up here in Michigan, I have no idea what the fuck a dry heat is. It's all humidity here. Yeah, that's true. And, and there was none uh, of that dry heat. He's like, well, okay. Guess hey, uh, I missed out on that. 120, says Diggs. Diggs, I, I grew up in that shit. It's like, I, I'm fine with it, but all preferences aside, I like Four Seasons. Yes. I think that's nice. I, I think I, I, I think that's reasonable. But if I have to have two and it has to be one extreme or the other, I'll take cold over heat. Yes, it's easier to warm that's why I like winter. It's easier to warm up than it is to cool off. It's no, it's it's one of those things. That's how I look like, at it. It's it's like I hate walking around and just feeling like I'm constantly boiling. Like cold, I can run between places that are warm. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's a it's a personal thing. Yeah. Okay, that's not working. Uh, snakes on Crash Man? No, not snakes. How about uh, Spark on Crash Man? Crash Man, what do you not like? Stop moving, damn it! Oh, fuck you! Okay, that's gonna hurt. I'm gonna die. Uh, oh, you know what? Magnet. No, not magnet. Uh, maybe hard knuckle on this guy. I forget. I forget what he is weak to. But I think that everyone, yes. I think that every place has a perfect season and a miserable part. You know, mm-hmm. ah, like Texas, Texas has beautiful storms and the summer is hilarious. And then the fall is tornadoes. And, and it's like, okay, you've got some, you got some things working against you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck you. Punch him in the face. Blah, blah. Boom. Fuck that guy. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can crack out the last 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 stage here. Yeah, if we can bust all this out in one sitting, I think this is a really nice way of showing people, one, you know a game, two, we're having fun while doing it, and three, we talked about all the existential big game, or big brain game crises, like, when was the year you realized you were an adult, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a good let's play. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just nice to get into the minds of people and get to know people a little bit better. Oh, I think about all sorts of crazy things all the time. I can't help it. What if we had fingers for toes and toes for fingers? Eh, I think we'd be pretty much the same. I mean, you know, um, assuming we would adapt one end or the other to lift stuff. I mean, it, it's not it's not that hard to see. But, but what if it happened overnight and we weren't prepared for it? Well, it's like uh, people who actually have uh, nerve damage where their optic nerve flips because of like a brain impact. So they actually have to adapt and there's like a really crazy period. But believe it or not, the brain can. Oh, yeah. Like one day it'll just... It'll be perfect. You'll start to see it and feel it that way. And then you can't go back. But yeah, there's there's amazing stuff the human brain can do. It's wild. Yeah, like, remember things for a test? Hell no, but remember how to play this game? You bet I can still do it 20 years later. I still remember the chi- or I still remember the access code for Jagged Alliance 2 to log onto the computer, and it's XEP624. Nice. And I, I remember stuff like that from strategy games. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. It's it's just if you play enough of something, it just you're like, oh, yeah, this. And you're like, why do I remember that? Supposed to jump here and you know, slide here kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm right there. On that. Uh, all right, extra energy tank. Let's go. Well, if this, this guy was Logman and he was like the Bodart tree, that would be horrifying. Uh, that thing will stop a fucking chainsaw. So you'd be like, aha, and then you your chainsaw stops working. Oh, like you shoot through the shield? Fuck, I wasn't doing that. I gimped myself there. Oh, man. I love how they just have this bolo guy. Like, they're like, we designed a robot to seek and destroy enemies. And you're like, oh, cool, what kind How's of robot? How's he do it? Like, he, he throws he, a he hammer. Throws, he throws a hammer on a string. You know, like, like the kind they use yep. for the Olympics. Yeah, he just throws that. He's a hammer string kind of guy. I think that one's. I think he's actually called Hammer Joe. Or Knuckle Joe. 
Uh, Mac Bojack says he still has the muscle memory of the health code for GTA Vice City. It's things like that. If you play enough of a game, you just remember shit. You're like, God, how... Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, IDKFA, IDDQD. I mean, that's all memory, man. Oh, fuck you! Oh, at least I'm at the halfway point. Custom Robo. No, Custom Robo was on the GameCube. Here in the U.S., at least. My friend Dan used to play a lot of, like, Ogre Battle 64, which I'm told is now a super rare game. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah, a lot of cartridges do that. A lot of cartridges have gone up. Like, uh, I was thinking about, well, not thinking, I will be doing a playthrough on the channel, depending on how, how well the uh, model build goes and everything like that. Oh, um, hey, we're figuring we're figuring this out. This is easy. This is oh fun. yeah. Well, like when I when I run out of pieces, you know, basically if I run out of pieces or run out of model, uh, you know, I might switch to some gaming and whatnot. Now, of course, probably play. Uh, I'll probably play them all, but I don't know to start with uh, Chrono Trigger, Final Fa Oh shit, that's not a mistake. Yet. Chrono oh, Trigger, man. Final all Fantasy Final Two or oh, Final yeah. Fantasy Three on the Super. All the old Final Fantasies would be great. I mean, they're they're very different games, and I think walking through those would be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I I know two like the back of my hand. That was the first Final Fantasy game I played. I remember renting that from one of the few video stores. I think it was Value Video, not the not the Value Video we kind of know nowadays, but uh. That still rented Super Nintendo games after, like, Blockbuster and Mammoth Video cycled them all out. Of, uh, all out of their, uh, stocks. And I played the hell out of Final Fantasy 2. And I'm pretty sure the current save game I have on my cartridge is no longer there because that game, the battery is notorious just for dying out. Really? And having to know that. replay it. But yeah, I was thinking of playing those on stream and maybe uh, bring it up to chat, you know, to name the players and things like that. As name the characters as long as they're not, you know, too terrible names. All right, let's at least I'll at least try and get to Wiley's cast before I got to go because I got about uh, I got about twenty-ish minutes before I got to go. Although speaking of, uh, we will be doing that interview on the fourth, I believe, right? Saturday the fourth at about eight o'clock. We'll be doing a uh, Tech Talks Battletech Q&A about the Warhammer. Uh, Saturday the 4th. Uh, yeah, next month, I think. Right. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just... My brain is dumb. Yeah. Um, we're going to do... Um, Mike has been trying to interview me since the beginning because I'm a weird guy. And mm -hmm. I Mike is actually an interviewer. And he's an interviewer who is noted for interviewing. And he's also a interview documentarian and a documentarian. And so I know all that. He said all that. And he wants to interview me. And it's very nerve-wracking because I know he's good at it. And so... <laughs> Um, I finally agreed over the Warhammer because I'm very not a public facing person mm -hmm. in, in these sorts of respects. And, and the team also wants to be there. Yeah. To, of course. Oh yeah. We're going to, yeah. You, I, Mike and Gypsy, I believe are going to be there. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I want to make sure that, you know, everyone, everyone is represented. I always try to make sure, especially with the last podcast I was on, I, I just said my team, my team, my team, because, you know. You, yeah, you gotta, it is a team gotta, effort. Yeah. You guys put yes. a lot of work into that, and it showed. Well, I just get mad when you go watch the Hollywood, you know, whatever, and they're like, ah, oh, yes, the best actor. And I'm like, yes, the person who got paid the most who did some work, but then, you know, oceans of people editing for tens of thousands of hours, and they're like, yeah, we'll hold that award in another building. And I'm like, right, right. That's bullshit. I think that's BS. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We were told to ask Ghostbusters questions instead of, instead of like Parallax. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess you, 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 that's what you want. But I think we're taking questions at uh, WBPL at gmail.com, I think, for this. It's where most of the questions will be taken. We might take some from chat. I don't know, I'm sure. Bowser or Diggs can correct me on that, but 
Sure. Um, it's it's coming together. Yeah. And you know, Diggs, I was thinking about playing late night Rim World. Maybe I'm not. I'm not sure if there's any appeal of someone who would want to watch me like late night during one of the weekday nights. Uh, play Rim World for one or two hours on my really super cursed, thorough, custom world where I have like 80 mods and I, I basically turn everything into a, a railroad camp from the 1870s. Oh, isn't that fun? I get, get the needles in there, get also, like you're fighting a leaf man yes. who is inside of a terror, terror robot. Yes. Alright, come on, you son of a bitch. Fuck! Okay. That's gonna be rough. That's gonna be rough. Oh, somebody asks, what's my favorite bubble gum? Uh, sugar-free. I don't eat sugar. Uh, rarely do. I, I, would, I would say... <laughs> oh, favorite bubble gum. Yeah, that was great. I know. It keeps coming back. As far as it goes uh, with gum, though, uh, I don't know. Striker, what, what is... Because as, as you showed so keenly in the 80s and 90s, it was, it was a wild time of advertising to kids. You yes. Know, with toys and... And gum and and food and experiences and all these things. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking like we're fruit by the foot or fruit by the foot and yeah. um, tiger stripe gum and all of that shit. Well, it was uh, fruit stripe gum and bubble gum. If you, if you think about the one with the zebra on it, that was fruit stripe yeah. gum, and then they had the bubble right. gum, which flavor lasted a total of two point nine seven seconds. Yeah, and oh, also by the way, it's it's one of those things of like I would love to do door fortress with Pablo. I make funny fortresses, but Pablo's great at it. We we need to bully Pablo into playing door fortress on here. He he did it once, but we we need to have like a regular fort with Pablo. Yeah, we gotta find, we, got, we gotta give him a babysitter or something like that, or at least some chloroform. A little bit, you know, you, you know, just, just enough to you know keep the kids occupied for you know a couple hours. Well, and here's the thing, is that, like, you have to ask yourself, what is modern gum for? Is it to cover up a cigarette or garlic you ate? Or is it to, like, you know, like you're about to smooch your lady or whatever, and you need you need some of this? Because I, I see the gum commercials now, and they're like, what's it like to choose five gum? And they show, like, a detonation of some IED, and they're like... That's five gum. No, wait. That was the ripoff five gum commercial. The guy. <laughs> well, so no. That's, that's basically that's basically it though for five gum. It's like what the what, how how does that describe how it choose to feel eat something? No, I I want I want a commercial like the old bubble tape commercials, like the old bubble tape where it's just you know six feet of bubble gum for you and not them, where it just shows kids you know ripping on a duck saying, oh, this is my bubble tape. It's for me, not you. It's, yeah, someone's gonna beat your ass and take that bubble tape. I yeah, saw that yeah, happen. This, this be my ass. There's there's gonna be there's gonna be bubble tape detente. Uh, one of the one of the ones yeah. that I saw yeah. was I once saw a kid get that bubble tape uh -huh. and he took the whole thing out and he bit across it. Oh, you know, like Tom that's how Tom eats Kit Kats. That's how Tom, Tom eats Kit Kats. Tom did that with yeah. a fucking chocolate orange. He's oh yeah, he ate it like an apple. Yeah, he ate it like an apple. Yeah, Tom is a monster. Across, just, oh, across the top. Yeah. All right. I got one more and life. It's it's okay to not like. There's idea people in media, and there's there's action people in media. It, it's why there's like the artist, and then there's the guy who's the producer. And actually, if you want to see a really good portrayal of what a Hollywood producer is really like, or a studio head, um, even though it's not a great movie, it was pretty fun. Um, the Coen Brothers film uh, Hail Caesar is like late '40s, early '50s Hollywood. And it's a fictionalized story, but it's hilarious because you see this guy trying to run a studio, and um, yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of great stuff. They they also show the dangers of like mechanical uh, editing machines where they're running tape, oh, and yeah. everything else, and like manually running that, and it's all explosive. I mean, all the, all that tape is highly explosive. All right, we'll give this one last try. Then uh, if I don't make it through Woodman, which I probably won't. We'll probably call it here. I might play one more commercial break. We go through. We can go through the commercial together, kind of commenting on them, because I do have one more commercial reel left. Well, Diggs, for every idea that doesn't happen, we'll have a bunch that do. And I tell you what, I'm serious about it. We need to get Neverwinter Nights on this because I think people need to see us suffer through that campaign or whatever. And go from level zero to level eight hundred. Um, the other thing I think that would be a great late night is I could do some Rimworld. 
um, because I know Quish does RimWorld cooking, and that's really cool. Um, and I, I think that's unique, and everyone's RimWorld is unique. If I did it, it would be um, the happy, fun times oh, oh, uh, wait, wait. work camp that I run. Get the ah! Jumped. All right. Almost had. Almost had. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for the game. So before we end the chat, let's go. Like I said, let's just uh, let's go through. Let's go through one more roll of commercials here. Let's see what we've got here. What do we got? Announcing the Fox Kids TV takeover. It all starts at McDonald's where you snag a ballot and vote Excuse me, it's called Uranium Kids Show. Then on Thanksgiving weekend, one lucky voter will start on oh, Fox as host of two hours of vote fun for shows. We want for Thanksgiving weekend. I don't think this contest going on. Oh, the Burger King Kids Club. Look at that. Entries must be received by November 18th for your chance to be a star. Oh, we're trip to Hollywood Where Studios. All right. Oh, it's Super Dave Osborne. That's right. He had a cartoon. Just sits there. Stay calm. I'll find him. This oh, old, sweet oh, oh yeah, old we'll Cold Pops commercial. Where it's some kind of existential me. crisis for the child. Like, where are my pops? Where are they at? I need to what have them. Kellogg's corn oh, pops is part of this complete bitch. breakfast. I'd be more warned about all this syrup in them, but now that's just me. Yeah, but I gotta have my pops. New game scrutinized. Find all you can in a What was Corn Pops doing on Special Mark back? Well, if you put all of them together, you can find out what the hell's in them. I don't know. I guess so. Oh, the incredible crash, crash test. I can't remember if they had a show, but obviously they did have a toy line. Because I remember having a text. Um, yeah, I, I, I got one of those uh, dummies ones. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a toy when I was young. Um, and then, and then uh, it was thrown away because it was like, oh, it's broken. And it's like, no, it's not. It's supposed to be. And they're like, well, back together. Yeah, no, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was one of those side cases. Uh, incredible crash test dummies. Yeah, they... I mean, yeah, obviously, I know they did commercials for buckling up. Don't be a dumb fuck on Oh, can't get enough of that sugar? I'm sure the bad baby. He's gonna steal honey crisp, gold crisp from Granny Sweet. If I think that would be a horrible fucking life if you went to your kitchen and all there was was a golden crisp machine. So, like, day one, you're like, I guess I eat this. But, like, day ten, you're like, my pancreas hurts. Why? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a lot of milk, but it's just nothing but golden crisp. No, I can't be for that break. Oh, yeah, I guess that was after that commercial break. All right. Well, uh, I, suppo well yeah, I suppose with that, uh, I'll end out this stream then. We all love you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for... The, we'll, we'll, yeah, 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 we'll thanks. start with that. We'll just empty promises. We love all of you individually. We know where you all live and love you there. How's that? We, we will kill you all with kindness. Don't worry, it is coming. Uh, but uh, thanks for hanging out with me, Tex. Um, chat was a little rough for me to kind of get at playing the game with just how I have things set up. And uh, No problem. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be on again tomorrow uh, about 10 o'clock, uh, more of the model building. Uh um, who knows? Who knows? Will pop in and out. There's, I'll just kind of leave the door open for anyone to kind of pop in and out, co-host with that. So, yeah, we'll doing that I mean, for a just, hours. just the show must go on. Yep. Have fun with whoever shows up. Shoot the shit. Have a good time. Yep. If not, I mean, just like last time, I'll just ramble about more cartoons and toys and other oddities like that. So, uh, everybody, have yourselves a good rest of the evening. And um, I think Farming Simulator will be coming up about an hour. Or so, yes. So the Farming Crew will yeah. take over next. Yeah, so I'll uh, catch you guys later. If you uh, enjoy, I hope you enjoy farming if you catch it. So uh, have a good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. And remember, you can downvote this thing, but hey, if you spread the word, we'd really appreciate it. All right, good night.